gifted a small umbrella by my wife's sister in the middle of the night. What an experience. Watching my wife's sister, her face red, flee in panic. How could Chen Luo not appreciate her kindness? Excitedly, he ran into Mi Li's room. Just now, the two of them who were left behind were about to fight. Seeing the main forces return, it's a perfect timing to join forces. Chen Luo remembers. The leader was the backer of bitch Chen Jing from his past life. Lu Wei. Lu Wei is a poison ability user. The thugs wanted to rob supplies, but were stopped by Lu Wei. All because he was waiting for the right moment to ambush Chen Luo and the others. The next second, Lu Wei left with his gang. Rice sensed the hostility from this man, so he warned Chen Luo. Chen Luo had his own plans in mind. Don't worry, Rice. Chen Luo swiftly unleashed a spatial sphere, instantly targeting and blowing off Lu Wei's head. Without hesitation, he then ordered his subordinates finish off the rest of them. Then, Chen Luo entered the room alone, remembering his past life. Starting the day after tomorrow, some zombies will evolve to level 1. We must transport the supplies back before they evolve. Chen Luo lay on the bed, deep in thought. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. Could it be Mi Li? Why is she so proactive today? Excited, Chen Luo sat up. But unexpectedly, it was Mi Ling. She even blushed and handed Chen Luo a small umbrella. Then she ran away in a hurry. Chen Luo smirked. Haha, how could I not appreciate the wife's sister's kind gesture? The next day, Chen Luo held a meeting. I think everyone has noticed that there are more and more zombies who can use magic. If one day all zombies could use magic, would you still survive? Upon hearing this, everyone started discussing. Yes, I've noticed too. It's terrifying. Exactly. What should we do? Just as everyone was discussing fervently, Chen Luo clapped his hands to interrupt everyone. If you all follow me, I won't let you die in vain here. Now, I'll teach everyone a method to deal with magic-wielding zombies. First, we need groups of four, ideally two warriors and two mages. Warriors take damage up front. Mages provide continuous output from behind. If you encounter multiple magic zombies, run. Now, I'll teach you a little trick to dodge spells. Mi Ling, Xu Yun, attack me with your spells. I'll dodge. Mi Ling and Xu Yun nodded, using their abilities to launch attacks at Chen Luo. Yet, all their attacks were easily dodged by him. Everyone watched. Mouths agape, faces full of disbelief. My god, the captain is amazing. Chen Luo then explained, to dodge a spell, it's impossible to watch the spell and dodge. You have to watch the caster's movements to predict the spell's trajectory and move in advance to dodge the attack. This is called anticipation. As long as you pay attention to the spell's trajectory, it's easy to dodge the zombie's magic. After hearing this, Mi Ling was eager to test it out again. Chen Luo chuckled. All right, bring it on. Little did he know, after dodging an initial fireball, he was hit by another one from behind. Mi Ling, pleased with her cunning, said with glee, I anticipated your anticipation. Hearing this, Chen Luo exclaimed, true to her name, the Spirit Flame Princess. Her combat talent is indeed formidable, but everyone can be reassured. Level 1 zombies definitely don't have this kind of wisdom. If you encounter one that can anticipate, just run. They are beyond your capability to resist. After dinner, everyone will go out and find opponents. Start practicing this skill. Before setting out, Chen Luo reminded everyone, listen up, today counts as half a day. Three level 1 crystals per person. Any team that doesn't complete this will be punished as a whole. The punishment is no dinner when you return. Meanwhile, Chen Luo led his team out to collect crystals, only to come across a father-daughter duo being bullied. At a glance, Mi Li recognized the girl as her best friend. Brother Chen Luo, can we help them? If they were strangers, maybe not. But since she's your best friend, how can we stand by and do nothing? He then ordered Thunder King to get off the vehicle to deal with the group. The gang greedily eyed Thunder King, thinking they had dog meat delivered to their doorstep, unaware that the god of thunder and lightning had arrived. Before they could react, Mi Ling and Su Daju ambushed them from behind, and at this moment, electricity surged around Thunder King. You bunch of trash think you can eat dog meat? After dealing with them, everyone began introductions. Zhang Jingjing shared that she and her father had no home, and wished to join Chen Luo's team. After some thought, Chen Luo nodded in agreement. After all, she was Mi Li's best friend. He told them to follow their rules. Follow us back to our base in your vehicle. Upon arriving at the villa area, Zhang Jingjing held Mi Li's hand, saying, Mi Li, can you ask brother Chen Luo if we can share a room tonight? We can chat and catch up. This left Chen Luo quite speechless. He already had rice as a third wheel, and now another one? How could he possibly agree? Chen Luo firmly declined with a cold face. No, without my permission, you cannot enter this villa. Turning to Xu Yun, he asked her to arrange accommodations for Zhang Jingjing. Xu Yun hurriedly took Zhang Jingjing away. At lunchtime, Zhang Jingjing curiously asked why Mi Li hadn't come, and wondered what she had for lunch. Zhang Jingjing's comment caught the other girls off guard, 
We're not three-year-olds, apart from occasionally dining with everyone. Chen Luo usually eats in his own villa room. As for what Chen Luo and the others eat, how would they know? Chen Luo is like the boss, and we're like the employees. It's always a bit uncomfortable eating with the boss, so everyone dines separately. Upon hearing this, Zhang Jingjing's face fell. Mi Li must be eating something better. We're such good friends, yet you didn't include me. This saddened her, making her previously delightful sausage seem less appetizing. Meanwhile, inside Chen Luo's villa, Chen Luo said to Mi Li, Mi Li, we need to observe your best friend for a while. Don't reveal anything about our side of things. Let's see if she's trustworthy. If she doesn't have any ulterior motives, even if she lacks abilities, I can arrange a logistical position for her. Mi Li nodded in agreement. Suddenly, Chen Guang's voice came through the intercom, stating that about a dozen cars had arrived at the villa's entrance, with roughly 50 to 60 people. Hearing this, Chen Luo immediately issued a series of commands, ordering everyone to assemble at the villa's entrance. Upon receiving the command, the girls promptly headed towards the villa's exterior. Before departing, Xu Yun asked Zhang Jingjing about her abilities. I have strength-based powers. Hearing this, Xu Yun instructed her to stand at the front of the lineup. Zhang Jingjing immediately resisted, grabbing Li Hui's hand, she said. Isn't she also standing at the back? Li Hui whispered in reply. I have support abilities. Chen Luo said I should stand at the back. Xu Yun, running out of patience, dragged Zhang Jingjing to the front. Zhang Jingjing protested tearfully. Mi Li and I are best friends. You can't treat me like this. Seeing this scene, Mi Li hurriedly approached to comfort Zhang Jingjing, saying that this is a step everyone has to go through. Don't worry, I'll boost your status. If you get injured, I can heal you. However, Zhang Jingjing was staring at the corner of Mi Li's mouth. Mi Li had a trace of white there, a remnant of the cream ice cream she had eaten. This detail fueled resentment in Zhang Jingjing's heart. You had such a delicious treat and didn't share with me. Moreover, I've never heard of you having a brother. But here you are, constantly calling Chen Luo brother. You must have used your charms on him. If you don't value sisterhood, don't blame me for not being courteous. At that moment, both sides were intensely confronting each other. Just then, Chen Luo walked up from behind. Seeing him, Chen Guang immediately greeted Big Brother, the leader of the opposing group, Sun Daowei, scoffed upon seeing this. So, this is the impressive leader of the squad? Just a pretty boy. Young man, you're in charge here, right? My people haven't eaten or drunk for a day. Could you provide some assistance? Chen Luo replied, we can't just give you supplies, but we can trade. You can exchange the crystals from the zombies' foreheads. One crystal for a bottle of water and a pound of rice. After all, our food is also limited. It's impossible to just give it away. Sun Daowei was taken aback by Chen Luo's statement. He hadn't expected Chen Luo to reveal the secret of the crystals. It seemed that Chen Luo led this group due to some superior power. With that in mind, Sun Daowei decided not to feign niceties anymore. You think your group of women can stop us? That's a dream. Guys, this man wants us to kill zombies to provide us with supplies. What do you think we should do? Upon hearing this, there was a murmur of discussion behind Sun Daowei. Many hoped that Chen Luo would spare them some food, but Chen Luo knew that if he compromised and gave them food, they would always want more. Whenever their food ran out, they'd surely come to him. It seemed that these people truly weren't afraid of death. Just then, Zhang Jingjing suddenly spoke up. In all matters, harmony is most precious. Give them a bit of what they want and let them leave. Hearing this, everyone's expressions changed. Zhang Jingjing, what nonsense are you talking about? Faced with Mi Li's gentle persuasion, Zhang Jingjing seemed unaffected and insisted she wasn't speaking nonsense. Nonsense. Why engage in a life and death battle when you can just use food to send them away? Moreover, I'm standing right in the front. What if I get hurt in a fight? Before she could finish, Sun Daowei from the opposing side burst into laughter. This young beauty speaks the truth. We don't need much. Just give us a few thousand pounds of rice or flour, and several tons of purified water. Unable to bear it anymore, Chen Luo slapped Zhang Jingjing across the face. Who do you think you are? Is this your place to speak? The boss is talking here. It's one thing for the younger ones to interrupt, but it's another thing to speak on behalf of the enemy. Zhang Jingjing's father couldn't hold back anymore. He ran over and rebuked Chen Luo. Is what my daughter said wrong? There are so many of them. What good will come from fighting? Besides, you have so much food. What's the harm in sharing a little with them? To risk your subordinates lives over some food. Your heart is truly malicious. Mi Li tried to help Zhang Jingjing up, but was pushed away as Zhang Jingjing hurled curses at her. Seeing this, Chen Luo looked displeased. He had saved them out of goodwill, yet instead of being grateful, they were causing disruption among his troops. Truly, some people are worth saving while others are not. With this thought, Chen Luo momentarily ignored the father-daughter duo and turned to face Sun Daowei. If that's what you truly want, then I'll give it to you. Having said that, before Sun Daowei could react, Chen Luo suddenly conjured a spatial orb in his hand and hurled it towards Sun Daowei's head. Accompanied by a loud bang, Sun Daowei's head exploded. Seeing the stunned faces of the opposing group, Chen Luo swiftly waved his hand, issuing a command. If they wish for death, then let's oblige. When Zhang Jingjing saw that in just a short exchange, seven or eight people were killed, and in no time, Sun Daowei's group collapsed. Without a leader and lacking strict command, they were easily defeated, leaving Zhang Jingjing dumbfounded. She had expected
expected a bloodbath, but it ended so effortlessly. No wonder Chen Luo was so uncompromising. Had she not intervened earlier, there might not have been any conflict at all. Thinking this, Zhang Jingjing crawled towards Chen Luo in tears, begging for his mercy and pleading with him not to kill her. Chen Luo chuckled. Don't worry, you're me Li's best friend. How could I possibly kill you? However, you can't remain in my team. Leave while I'm still in a good mood. Hearing this, Zhang Jingjing nodded. She knew that staying could endanger her life. Although she was resentful, she had to prioritize her safety. Mi Li managed to get close to the boss. I can do the same, she thought. After the two departed, Chen Luo subtly nudged Thunder King, hinting that he shouldn't leave any potential threats behind. Thunder King got the message instantly, quietly following Zhang Jingjing from a distance. At that moment, Chen Guang rushed over and said, Bro Chen, a young man who just left mentioned he has urgent business with you. He seemed quite anxious. Chen Luo nodded in acknowledgement, and then approached the young man to ask about his business. The young man, Leng Chen, said with a sheepish grin, Boss, are you recruiting? I want to join you. Upon hearing that, Chen Luo's face instantly turned cold. This is the important matter you spoke of? Leng Chen, frightened, quickly pulled out a blue crystal. Chen Luo's pupils constricted upon seeing it. It's a level 6 crystal. How did you get this? Leng Chen truthfully responded. I obtained it from a dead monster. The creature was over 10 meters tall. Consider this our greeting gift to you, boss. What do you think? Upon hearing this, Chen Luo chuckled. For your sincerity, I'll let you join. Chen Guang, explain our rules to him. Chen Guang approached and explained the team's principles. Firstly, always follow the boss's commands. Secondly, if you flee in battle, you will be killed. While speaking, Chen Guang made a throat-slitting gesture. Hearing this, Ling Chen nodded in acknowledgement. Chen Luo, with excitement evident on his face, gazed at the level 6 crystal in his hand. With this, I can advance to level 5 in just 3 days. That's half a month faster than I expected. Excellent. With that in mind, Chen Luo instructed Chen Guang to keep an eye on the people around the villa. After all, many from Sun Daowei's team escaped. If you find any with light abilities or support skills among them, recruit them all. If they refuse, bring them to me by force. Only me Li in our group possesses healing arts. If more people get injured, she won't be enough to treat them. Don't worry, bro Chen. I understand, replied Chen Guang. As Chen Luo prepared to return to the villa, he spotted Thunder King. You're back so soon, asked Chen Luo. Thunder King boasted proudly. Who do you think I am? I'm a professional hunter. To train the new member, Chen Luo immediately convened a mobilization meeting. He assigned Xu Yun to lead a team to hunt zombies, collecting crystals and resources. Leng Chen, looking at the leader Xu Yun, remarked to Chen Guang in surprise. She's not as she appears. I thought you'd be leading. Instead, it's a pretty girl. Is she very skilled? Chen Guang chuckled and explained. I'm just a younger brother here. The ladies in our team joined the boss earlier and have all reached level 2. Xu Yun, leading now, is particularly talented and has the boss's favor. I believe she's already level 3. Upon hearing this, Leng Chen was flabbergasted. My goodness, that's so powerful. All level 2 ladies, facing a group of zombies, Xu Yun issued a series of commands. Everyone split into groups of 4 to search for and collect supplies. Jiang Feng, you stay at the entrance of the residential area. If there's any situation, use the walkie-talkie to inform everyone. An hour later, dozens of vehicles swiftly approached the residential area. Jiang Feng, who was guarding the entrance, saw them and his face changed color. He quickly contacted everyone through his walkie-talkie. Be alert, a large number of vehicles have entered the area. Be cautious. Upon hearing this, Xu Yun immediately instructed everyone to gather and assess the situation. We don't need to rush to collect supplies. However, Yen Li was somewhat unwilling to give up. There's still a lot of food here. If we gather together, what are we afraid of? As everyone prepared to go upstairs, they realized it was too late. They were surrounded by the arriving group. The men in the vehicles, spotting the ladies, displayed lecherous grins. One of them stretched out his hand with malicious intent toward Yen Li. Yen Li quickly slapped the man's hand away and shouted, What do you think you're doing? Just having a little fun, sweetheart. It's the apocalypse. No need to play coy anymore, right? Hearing their vulgar words and unable to restrain herself any longer, Yen Li delivered a swift kick, shattering the man's eggs. The leading man of the opposing group was infuriated. You dare hit my brother? Take out these two men first. We'll deal with the women later. As the words left his mouth, a group immediately surrounded the two men from Yen Li's team. Seeing this, Yen Li tried to step forward to help, but unexpectedly, someone attacked her from behind. A metal rod was slammed ruthlessly onto her head. In an instant, Yen Li collapsed on the ground with a gash on her head, bleeding profusely. The man cursed at her. Bitch, how ungrateful. A voice shouted, Hey Z, what are you doing? Hearing this, Hey Z quickly replied with an ingratiating smile, Bro Yuan, some damn woman tried to hit me. I just taught her a lesson. Lu Yuan frowned, guessing what had transpired. Given Hei Z's strength and value to the team, he didn't reprimand him, but warned, Don't go too far. This should not happen again. The others nodded in agreement. Just then, an ice arrow shot through the head of the man in black. Upon seeing this, Lu Yuan immediately got out of his vehicle. Xu Yun coldly said, Release them. Lu Yuan scoffed, You killed one of mine and expect me to let them go? Hearing this and filled with anger, Xu Yun immediately shot an ice arrow 
arrow towards Lu Yuan. In response, Lu Yuan summoned a protective shield made of earth. Although Xu Yun's ice arrow penetrated the shield, it had lost most of its momentum. Both Xu Yun and Lu Yuan's expressions changed, recognizing each other's power. After a moment of standoff, Xu Yun calmed down, fully aware that now wasn't the time for an all-out battle. She demanded the release of her teammates. Lu Yuan, not wanting an all-out conflict either, agreed. Although the four members of Xu Yun's team were returned, Yan Li had already succumbed to her injuries. Xu Yun, cradling Yan Li's lifeless body, mourned deeply, you'll pay for this. Chen Luo won't let you go. Men from the opposing side began to mockingly jeer at the scene. However, Xu Yun ignored them and whispered, let's go. Yang Xian gave the men a cold glance and was about to drive away the heavy truck when someone stopped them, leave the truck, you can't take it. Upon hearing this, Xu Yun, suppressing her rage, said, give it to them, let's leave. Watching the retreating figures of Xu Yun and her team, Hei Zi whispered to Lu Yuan, suggesting they forcibly keep the group of beautiful women. Lu Yuan, however, slapped Hei Zi in response and scolded, damn it, why are you stirring up trouble? That woman is not to be trifled with. Hei Zi, covering his face, argued that they had the advantage in numbers. Would they really risk everything? Lu Yuan was aware that this group's main base was nearby and realized that the situation wasn't as simple. They needed to understand their enemy's capabilities, and then strike them decisively. Otherwise, they'd face retaliation. Back in the villa area, Xu Yun immediately briefed Chen Luo on the entire situation, admitting her mistakes and recognizing her failure in leadership, which led to Yan Li not dying at the hands of zombies but by survivors instead. Hearing this, Chen Luo took a deep breath and reassured her, you did the right thing. Engaging in a fight then would have been unwise. He was well aware that the most dangerous thing in this post-apocalyptic world wasn't zombies, but the infighting among survivors. Since you all chose to follow me, I won't let anyone trample on us. Those who spill our blood must pay in kind. When I have a grudge, I don't let it linger. Immediately, he gathered everyone from the villa to set out for revenge. Hearing about the incident and Chen Luo's declaration, everyone was filled with righteous indignation, especially by Chen Luo's words which made their blood boil. With Chen Luo leading, they felt undefeatable. Seeing the imposing Chen Luo and his group, Hei Zi commented, Bro Yuan, someone's approaching. It looks like the group that just left. Lu Yuan quickly looked out the window and saw more than 60 people alighting from vehicles. As the two factions locked eyes, Lu Yuan sensed something amiss. This woman, a level 3 ability user, was pouring her grievances out to this young man. Chen Luo coldly stared at them. Are you the leader? Who gave you the audacity to kill one of mine? I can't find a single reason to spare any of you. Upon hearing Chen Luo's words, Lu Yuan was taken aback. For some to speak with such confidence, the young man's strength must surpass that of the woman. They couldn't confront him directly. With that thought, Lu Yuan quickly apologized. Young man, it was our mistake. We'll return your truck immediately and compensate with a ton of rice. How about that? Chen Luo sneered. A ton of rice for the life of my team member? How about I give you a hundred tons for the lives of all your men? Hearing this, Lu Yuan frowned. He realized that this young leader was not to be trifled with. Anyone with such audacity must have a trump card. Otherwise, he wouldn't be the leader. People were his most valuable asset, and he couldn't risk them. With that thought, he decided to hand over the main culprits to Chen Luo for judgment. At his command, several of his men forcefully brought the struggling Hei Zi before Chen Luo. Seeing Hei Zi kneeling before him, Chen Luo smirked internally. You think handing over one scapegoat will resolve this? Impossible. I, Chen Luo, always repay my debts. Terrified, Hei Zi's nose ran with mucus as he pleaded with Chen Luo, claiming that he wasn't the only one responsible, and there were two others involved. Curious, Chen Luo looked at Lu Yuan and asked, what do you have to say? Knowing that he must hand them over to settle the matter, Lu Yuan ordered his men to bring forth the other two culprits. Observing this, Chen Luo coldly commanded, What are you waiting for? Step forward and slap these men. Continue until they're dead. As soon as the order was given, a group rushed forward, brutally slapping the three culprits. After a while of watching the trio bruised and battered, Chen Luo ordered for some medical treatment for them, only to let Xu Yun and the others continue the beating afterwards. The three men cried and pleaded, Big brother, we were wrong. We are willing to join you and fight against Lu Yuan. However, Xu Yun and the others paid no heed. After about 10 minutes, Hei Zi and the other two were slapped to death. Witnessing this, Lu Yuan was drenched in cold sweat. He hadn't anticipated the ferocity of these individuals. They say never to wrong a woman, he thought. Little brother, since the main culprits are now dead, and you've also killed one of ours, can we consider the matter settled? Lu Yuan proposed. Upon hearing this, Chen Luo snorted dismissively. You must be daydreaming. How can their pathetic lives compensate? I want the lives of everyone present. Lu Yuan retorted in disbelief. Belief. Are you even being reasonable? Why should I reason with you? Who do you think you are? Chen Luo shot back. This remark made Lu Yuan scoff. I've never seen someone as arrogant as you. You think I'm afraid of you? My men here fought their way out of zombies, and we even outnumber you. You'd best leave while you still can. Unperturbed by Lu Yuan's threat, numerical superiority means nothing in the face of absolute power. It's just a delivery of heads. I need to establish
establish my authority amongst my followers. To firmly sit in a leader's position, one not only needs resources, but also raw power. It's been a long time since I last showed my true strength. Many of my new members haven't seen what I'm truly capable of. This is a perfect opportunity for me to demonstrate and intimidate. With that thought, Chen Luo instantly summoned his void sword and charged towards Lu Yuan. Seeing this, Lu Yuan realized the imminent danger and quickly summoned an earth and shield to protect himself. However, the void sword, like a blade through sand, pierced effortlessly through the shield, then through Lu Yuan's body. Lu Yuan was immediately split in two. Witnessing the swift execution of their leader, the opposing forces felt their scalps tingle with terror. At this moment, Mi Li cast a spell on Chen Luo, enhancing his defense and strength. Chen Luo grinned, it's great to have a wife who looks out for you. He then charged into the heart of Lu Yuan's camp like a tiger amongst sheep. Although the void sword couldn't last more than an hour, it could easily endure for three minutes. Another two fell, sliced cleanly in half by Chen Luo's blade. The shock and terror that had started with Lu Yuan's death now peaked. Thoughts raced. This guy isn't human. If we don't flee now, we'll die by his hand. Chen Guang, Leng Chen, and others were deeply shaken by the scene. While Mei Li sighed, the gap between him and me seems to be growing. She urged, let's all attack together and not leave any lingering threats. Half an hour later, Chen Guang, exhilarated, pledged his loyalty to Chen Luo. Listening to Chen Guang's flattery, Chen Luo responded with a mild smile. Enough of the bootlicking. I truly regret Yan Li's death, but this is the apocalypse. We must remain vigilant at all times, as danger can strike any moment. I sent you out to gather crystals, but more importantly, to gain battle experience. The best protector for each of you is yourselves. I hope everyone will quickly enhance their skills, and since you've chosen to follow me, anyone who bullies you will pay the price. Now, let's gather some supplies. It's almost noon. We should head back and let a few of our skilled sisters prepare lunch for everyone. In a villa district, two men in tattered shirts were intently staring at Thunder King, craving his flesh. Although Thunder King was aware, he pretended to be oblivious, intending to tease these two. The men, meanwhile, were salivating profusely. Just as one of them, with red hair, was about to make a move, he was stopped by Miao Hui, who advised against rashness. What if the dog escapes? We've been hungry for a day and definitely can't outrun this dog. Let's lure him over with a piece of feces, ensuring a fail-proof plan. As the saying goes, a dog can't change its habit of eating feces. As Thunder King approached step by step, the two drooled even more. Really? I'm minding my own business and you're offering yourselves up to die? Using feces to lure me? You can target a dog, but you can't insult one this way. With these thoughts, Thunder King became so enraged that unnatural lightning began to flash around him. This bewildering phenomenon left Sieda and Miao Hui dumbstruck. How can this dog generate electricity? Especially given Thunder King's fierce appearance, the two sensed imminent danger and turned to flee towards the exit. But it was too late. Thunder King spewed terrifying lightning from his mouth, striking them down. This scene was coincidentally witnessed by the returning Chen Luo. Thunder King, what are you doing? Were these two intruders? An infuriated Thunder King ignored Chen Luo and left. Watching him leave, Chen Luo was utterly perplexed, wondering what had just transpired. Unable to fathom the situation, Chen Luo decided not to dwell on it. Turning to the others, he said, All right, everyone, take a break now. After lunch, you're free to practice. As the crowd dispersed, Chen Luo contemplated whether he should recruit more members. After all, his team was relatively small. If they were to encounter a group of several hundred people, even he alone couldn't handle them all. Furthermore, with the current manpower, who knows how many would remain after a few months. It seems necessary to draft a recruitment notice. I have plenty of supplies. As long as they obey orders and dare to combat zombies, they're welcome to join. After lunch, Chen Guang sat at the entrance of the villa district. A conspicuous notice board had been placed at the entrance. The message was quite straightforward, indicating that there were several tier 3 superpower users in the base. Their strength was formidable. The compensation was generous, and there were sufficient crystals. Before long, a seven-seater minivan pulled up to the entrance. The sight of the notice board piqued their curiosity, drawing them closer for a better look. After reading all the terms and conditions, the group, who were uncertain about their next move, were immediately intrigued. But while the perks were attractive, the qualifications were demanding. Only tier 2 individuals could join, and out of the five of them, only two met the criteria. One of them inquired, Chao, what do you think? Wang Chao hesitated before saying, if everything they've mentioned is true, then there's no doubt, we should join. But only Lu Qi and I have reached tier 2. The three of you don't meet the criteria. Lu Qi suggested, why don't we get out of the car and inquire? Don't they accept family members? Chen Guang laughed and shook his head. Family members refer to those with blood relations. However, if a tier 1 individual can contribute three tier 1 crystals, they can join. Hearing this, 
The man named Lu Qi introduced himself, claiming he was a healer, someone who could heal and bolster strength. He asked if they could make an exception for him. Qin Guang was taken aback by this revelation. Healers were rare and valuable. He immediately agreed and brought them to Qin Luo. Qin Luo looked them over. Lu Qi's name seemed familiar to Qin Luo. He recalled hearing about a rather well-known healer by that name. Additionally, Rice confirmed that these newcomers bore no ill intent. So, Qin Luo tasked Qin Guang with their arrangements. Returning to the villa, Qin Luo took out the Tier 6 crystal to absorb its power. By his estimations, he should be able to advance to Tier 5 by nightfall. And indeed, with the depletion of the Tier 6 crystal, Qin Luo successfully ascended to Tier 5. As their team grew stronger, their needs for supplies also increased. Qin Luo thus rallied everyone to embark on a supply hunt. Before leaving, he reminded Qin Guang and Thunder King to guard their base. Half an hour later, a grand convoy reached a nearby agricultural market. Though the market was teeming with zombies, it was equally abundant in supplies. Facing the horde, using traditional four-person team Team tactics would be ineffective. Jiang Feng, you'll draw the zombies out, one batch at a time. For Jiang Feng's safety, Mili boosted his status. Entering the marketplace, Jiang Feng quickly attracted a group of seven or eight zombies, which eagerly pursued him. As long as he maintained a distance of more than 20 meters from the zombies, they couldn't harm him. Lower tier zombies didn't have a long attack range. Meanwhile, the rest of the team stood by, launching long range magical attacks. Observing the scenario, Chen Luo explained, See this? If you encounter slightly larger groups, of zombies in the future, use this tactic. But if there are too many, don't try it. If you die, don't blame me. He then delegated a few tier 2 members with good speed to attract the zombies. Let's start clearing them. An hour later, the hundred or so zombies lurking around the marketplace were exterminated. Hearing the team's reports, Chen Luo nodded in acknowledgement. I'll personally draw out the next batch of zombies. Chen Luo was reluctant to send Jiang Feng because he feared he might encounter a mutated zombie and lose his life. He recalled hearing in his past life about a certain time when there was a mutated Earth-type zombie in the market, its strength equivalent to a Tier 4 or Tier 5 zombie. The question was where this creature was hiding. He first approached the area selling pork, beef, and lamb. The space spanned about 5 to 600 square meters and was home to around 80 to 90 zombies. Just then, a zombie resembling an old farmer with a straw hat suddenly unleashed several spikes in a straight line, effectively blocking Chen Luo's path. But Chen Luo, far from panicking, rejoiced, didn't expect to find you so soon. Utilizing his void walking, he not only dodged the old farmer zombie's attack, but also instantly appeared behind it. The creature had no time to employ its earth shield, and Chen Luo's blade swiftly decapitated it. Holding its still twitching head, Chen Luo continued running forward, now with over 200 zombies tailing him. The sight of such a massive horde following Chen Luo left the others stunned. Run, he yelled, use your speed advantage to lose them. Prep your magic, roughly aim, and cast, but don't stop, keep running. With everyone's coordination, the hundreds of zombies were easily vanquished. Jubilation and a hint of exhilaration filled the faces of the team. If we practice this strategy diligently, no amount of zombies will be a match for us. Chen Luo, however, was more sober-minded. Only if you keep pace with the evolution of the zombies, most survivors can't keep up with the rapid development of these creatures. Now, let's gather what supplies we can carry and move out. Meanwhile, Chen Luo ventured into the cold storage room. Compared to the one where he stored pork, this one seemed quite small. It had been without power for a long time, rendering the meat inside spoiled. But Chen Luo decided to take out some pork and beef, presenting them as part of the retrieved supplies. Two hours later, the group had loaded all the supplies onto their vehicles. As they were about to drive away, a middle-aged man stepped forward to block Chen Luo's lead vehicle. With a calm demeanor, Chen Luo said, please, step aside. Just as the middle-aged man was about to speak, a motorcycle approached. From it alighted a tan-skinned but vibrant young man. Chen Luo's pupils contracted. It was him, Xia Haoren, known in the future as Unbeatable Iron Fist. To think that he'd encounter him here, but Xia Haoren wasn't there for Chen Luo. He was there for the middle-aged man blocking the way. Xia Haoren pleaded, Bro Long, I heard you caught a live chicken. Can you give it to me? My mother's condition is deteriorating, and she wishes for a bowl of chicken soup before the end. If you help, I'll be in your debt. Hearing this, Bro Long immediately declined. I'm sorry, brother, I can't do that. Although Bro Long spoke politely, the man behind him was not so kind. A smart calculation, taking Bro Long's chicken and then offering your life to him? Are you expecting Bro Long to take care of you forever? Chen Luo, observing this scene, suddenly chimed in, I have a chicken and a chef who can make the soup you desire. How about you owe me instead? Taken aback, Xia Haora nodded. Yes, for a satisfactory bowl of chicken soup, I will owe you my life. Chen Luo smiled. Deal. Trading a top-tier
volunteer fighter for a bowl of chicken soup? Who wouldn't take that bargain? He decided to bring both Xia Haoran and his ailing mother to his base. Half an hour later, Xia Haoran emerged from a building, carrying a woman in her 50s on his back, showing signs of weariness. After they boarded the vehicle, Xia Haoran whispered, she's in the late stages of cancer. Chen Luo realized there wasn't much hope for her, unless Mi Li could advance to level 7 now. Their current healing abilities were only good for treating minor injuries and hadn't reached the capability to cure terminal diseases. In less than half an hour, Chen Luo returned to the villa district. He asked Xu Yun to arrange a separate room for Xia Haoran and his mother, ensuring they would be well taken care of. He also mentioned he would organize for the chicken soup to be made. After they left, Chen Luo said to Mayu, whatever ingredients and seasonings you need, just let me know. Make sure you do this one diligently. Mayu nodded and muttered, do you think I wasn't serious before? Chen Luo replied awkwardly, cough. What I meant was, be even more meticulous this time. All right, but for a good chicken soup, it will take at least three hours. After pondering for a moment, Chen Luo suggested, then prepare some homestyle dishes. After all, we can't just have chicken soup. Maybe Xiao's mother would like to eat something else. If we're trying to win someone's heart, we should go all out. A few hours later, a table full of delicious dishes was served in front of Xia's mother. Xia Haoran was stupefied, and his mother had to rub her eyes, thinking she might be hallucinating. Chen Luo smiled and said, Auntie, let's eat. Although she initially declined, with Xia Haoran's assistance, she enjoyed a hearty meal. Before her final moments, she grasped Chen Luo's hand and trembled. Young man, I can see you're a good person. Please take care of my son. Turning to Xia Haoran, she added, A mother knows her son best. If he can offer such precious things to honor me, he must value you greatly. Don't let him down. Holding his mother's hand tightly, Xia Haoran responded, Mother, don't worry, I understand. Contrary to Chen Luo's expectations, Xia Haoran wasn't deeply saddened by his mother's passing. He said to Chen Luo, Big brother, thank you. My mother has passed, and it's for the best. She won't suffer from her illness any longer. Big brother, you'll see my performance in the future. He understood Xia Haoran's character. However, with the team growing larger, it was necessary to establish some rules early on. They couldn't let some people slack off. A system of rewards and punishments needed to be set up. The roles in the community community were divided into leader, deputy leader, elders, elite members, regular members, new members, and a special position named devotee, which only Chen Luo could assign. Su Daju and Mi Li held the devotee title. Each rank had its own privileges. Currently, those who reached level 3 could be designated as elite members, while everyone else was a regular member. Newcomers would start as new members, and after half a month or if they displayed exceptional merit, they would be upgraded to regular members. Later on, they could exchange personal points for resources in the base. Points would be distributed based on individual performance, with extra rewards for outstanding achievements. From then on, positions would be determined by points, not by rank. Thinking of this, Chen Luo gathered everyone to announce the system. Any power user who reached level 3 could be designated an elite member. If these elite members had leadership capabilities, they could lead 20 regular members. Xu Yun was the leader of the female squad, while Fang Yu and Chen Guang led the male squads. From today, this ranking policy would be officially implemented. As long as you were willing to risk your life, you could live comfortably. As Chen Luo announced this system, the excitement among the members below was palpable. Their morale soared, and they shouted in unison about killing zombies to earn points. At the same time, outside the villa area, two large convoys were approaching Chen Luo's base. The leader, Zhao Hai, asked the other convoy, I've hardly seen any zombies around here. Do you know what's going on? Seeing the number of people with Zhao Hai, he didn't dare to hide anything and honestly informed him. Upon hearing this, Zhao Hai was taken aback. He remembered that before the apocalypse, Chen Luo had had mortgaged his villa to him, borrowing 300 million to stockpile supplies. It seemed like Zhao Hai was on his way to collect that debt. Soon, Zhao Hai's convoy reached the entrance of the base. Lin Chen, who was at the gate, saw the convoy and immediately radioed Chen Luo for backup. Bro Chen, we need reinforcements at the gate. A large convoy has arrived. Hearing this, Chen Luo quickly rushed over. However, when he saw the person stepping out of the vehicle, he was momentarily stunned, thinking, isn't this the guy to whom I mortgaged my villa for 300 million? Zhao Hai, seeing Chen Luo's reaction, Action, laughed heartily and said, Little brother, who would have thought we'd meet under these circumstances? It's fate. Chen Luo, a bit embarrassed, replied, I didn't expect to see you here either. Are you in charge around here? Once Chen Luo confirmed, Zhao Hai cut straight to the point, Brother, you owe me 300 million, which has matured. With interest, that's 330 million. You've been overdue for a while now. Given the special circumstances, I'm willing to waive the late fees and interest. Just pay me back the principal. Hearing this, 
Chen Luo chuckled to himself, thinking, does he really believe I'll pay him back? Why is he under this illusion? Out loud, Chen Luo confidently said, brother, do you really think I, Chen Luo, would default on my debt? In fact, I've already transferred the money to your account, haven't you received it? It's a shame we don't have a signal now, otherwise I'd show you the transfer record, but you can't accuse me of not paying my debts. Xiao Hai was taken aback by Chen Luo's words, he never expected such a maneuver from him. This was like the pot calling the kettle black. One of Zhao Hai's men shouted angrily, you're talking nonsense. For such a large sum, wouldn't you personally come to inform us about the transfer? Do you think you can fool us with such a lame excuse? Chen Luo chuckled lightly, well, then you should go to the bank and bring out evidence that I didn't transfer the money. But since you have helped me in the past, I am grateful. I'll give you a ton of rice as a thank you. Xiao Hai, with a grim face, replied, brother, that's not fair. I won't make things difficult for you. Just give me some meat. The times have changed, and the value of meat has increased. For 300 million, give me 15 tons of meat, and we'll call it even. Jean Tao, who was standing beside Zhao Hai, sneered, everyone present should have a share. I want 15 tons too. That's not too much to ask, right? If you don't have the meat, you can settle the debt with the women by your side. Hearing Jean Tao's words, Chen Luo's expression turned cold. Even if I had the meat, why should I give it to you? Seeing Chen Luo's attitude, and the expressions of those behind him, Zhao Hai suddenly realized something. Chen Luo's team must have cleared out so many zombies due to their strength. Realizing this, Zhao Hai quickly changed his tone and said, I made a mistake. Chen Luo, your money did indeed come through. Upon hearing this, Jin Tao looked at Zhao Hai as if he had gone mad. I was mistaken. Brother Chen Luo is not one to default on his debts. Chen Luo clapped and said, you're a sensible man. Take your people and stand aside. Don't interfere. Zhao Hai, cooperating, waved his hand and, along with his subordinates, promptly departed. Jin Tao, on the other hand, hurled insults at the departing Zhao Hai. Zhao Hai, you coward. There are just a few people on their side, and you cower so easily? I must have been blind to trust you. Zhao Hai remained silent, thinking that there's no loss in being insulted. Seeing this scene, Jin Tao snorted, if you want to take me on, come at me. Chen Luo coldly addressed the crowd, anyone who doesn't want to meet their end alongside him, go stand by Zhao Hai's side. I'm giving you 10 seconds. Hearing this, indeed there were smart individuals in Jin Tao's group. Sensing the tense atmosphere, some began to retreat quietly. To Chen Luo's surprise, Jin Tao turned out to be a dark element user with a summoning talent. The same talent could manifest in various ways. For instance, the dark element could be divided into curse, summoning, undead, and attack subcategories. On Chen Luo's side, there was a girl named Li Hui who also belonged to the dark element, but her first acquired skill was a curse type that slows down movements. She was likely to specialize in curses. Jin Tao, on the other hand, possessed a summoning talent within the dark element. After five or six seconds, seven skeletal figures without flesh materialized in front of Jin Tao. Never seen this, have you? Jin Tao boasted, people killed by my skeletal soldiers go straight to hell. Their souls are devoured, and they're never reborn. Chen Luo laughed dismissively. Who are you trying to scare? Spouting all that mumbo jumbo. Why not claim you're the king of the underworld while you're at it? With that, Chen Luo stepped aside, making space, and shouted, It's your turn now. Five points for each kill. Capturing Jin Tao alive gets 100 points. Just then, Thunder King suddenly ran out, barking wildly. Over the past couple of days, he had set his sights on the elder's position. A twitch appeared at the corner of Chen Luo's mouth. What would you even do with points? Fine. If you want them, you'll have them. Hearing this, Thunder King barked twice excitedly, indicating he was in on the action. Leading the charge against the enemies, he released a well-prepared ball of lightning that exploded amongst them, instantly earning himself 20 points. This brought him one step closer to the coveted elder position. Seeing this, Mi Ling shouted, prepare your spells and wait for them to rush us. Jin Tao's side was forced into a passive position, especially with Thunder King relentlessly attacking them. Chen Luo was at a loss for words. He had wanted to train his team members, but his plans were completely disrupted by a dog. Suddenly, Thunder King approached Jin Tao and marked his territory right on him before chasing after others who were trying to escape. The message was clear. Jin Tao was his target, and nobody else should interfere. Chen Luo, covering his face in disbelief. Thunder King, was it really necessary to urinate in public like that? Watching his own teammates fall one after another, Jin Tao desperately clung to Chen Luo's leg, begging, Boss, spare my life. I'll do anything. Zhao Hai, witnessing the scene, felt thankful for making the wise choice of not deeply offending Chen Luo. Chen Luo glanced at Jin Tao. Don't worry, I won't kill you. He was preparing to exploit a bug. The undead creatures summoned by Jin Tao could also yield crystals. However, only level 4 undead creatures and above would have them, whereas those
below level 3 did not, Chen Luo planned to first help Jin Tao level up, thereby acquiring a tool to infinitely farm for crystals. Hearing that Chen Luo wouldn't kill him, Jin Tao immediately knelt and kowtowed in gratitude. Thank you, big brother. I can tell you're a man of your word. I'll listen to you sincerely. Young man, your summoning talent is impressive, and I have high hopes for you. But if you dare try any tricks or attempt to escape, I'll break all your limbs. With that, Chen Luo instructed those around him, lock him up in a room and treat him like a new recruit. At this moment, Zhao Hai stepped forward to apologize to Chen Luo. Bro Chen, you're truly capable. I apologize for any past offenses. He then handed over a finely crafted silver pistol to Chen Luo. Chen Luo chuckled lightly, knowing the weapon posed no threat to himself but could serve to intimidate others. With this thought, he boldly fired the gun at his chest in front of everyone. To their astonishment, the bullet couldn't penetrate and simply bounced off his clothes, falling weakly to the ground. Zhao Hai, shocked by what he'd witnessed, stumbled and sat on the ground, thinking, is he even human? The bullet didn't pose any threat at all. Bro Chen's strength has completely shattered my perceptions. Well, no fight, no acquaintance. We might still have grounds for cooperation. Chen Luo then loudly called out, bypassing Zhao Hai. Anyone here from the light, dark, earth, or nature faction? Of course, other unique support abilities are also welcome. We offer decent benefits here. Those considering joining, think about it. Quick-witted Lung Chen chimed in. We provide three full meals, sometimes with meat. Our conditions are excellent, and our strength is evident. Why the hesitation? Upon hearing this, the crowd immediately erupted in cheers, expressing their eagerness to join Chen Luo's team. Turning to Zhao Hai, Chen Luo asked playfully, Brother Zhao, you don't mind, do you? Zhao Hai gave a bitter smile, watching as the elites were drawn to Chen Luo. How could I object? Upon hearing Zhao Hai, Chen Luo shouted to the crowd, Everyone, quiet down. To join my team, you need to kill 10 zombies and obtain 10 crystals as proof. As soon as his words finished, groups of people began to form teams to hunt down zombies. Seeing his team members leaving, Zhao Hai didn't dare to stay longer, fearing if he did, everyone else might leave too. Bro Chen, if you ever need anything, come find me at the Golden Dragon Garden. I live there. If I ever run into trouble, I hope you can help, as friends. Chen Luo nodded, indicating no problem. That night, Mili lay in Chen Luo's arms and asked, Brother Chen Luo, I noticed the new members are performing well. Why don't you let them clear out the nearby zombies earlier? Zombies can evolve. Shouldn't we clear them all out before they complete their evolution? Chen Luo explained, that's just your perspective. Even now, some survivors are still afraid to confront zombies. If everyone comes together and they encounter a higher level mutated zombie, everyone could be wiped out. Mili responded with a simple acknowledgement and gradually fell asleep in Chen Luo's embrace. However, Chen Luo couldn't sleep. What he told Mili was just part of the reason. Knowing the future progression, he understood that zombies needed to evolve. After clearing out the zombies, there won't be enough high level crystals and humans couldn't evolve rapidly. When the more formidable creatures descend, they would be doomed. The next morning, like always, Chen Luo held a mobilization meeting, reminding everyone, be cautious when going out. The zombies will become increasingly stronger. But after they left, Rice suddenly seemed to sense something and anxiously said to Chen Luo, I have a bad feeling. I feel that Mi Ling might get hurt. There's no life-threatening danger, but I'm still worried. This statement made Chen Luo's face turn serious. Mi Ling, Mi Li, and Su Du Zhu always acted together, and with Thunder King as their bodyguard, under normal circumstances, there shouldn't be any danger to her. Thinking of this, Chen Luo sought confirmation, so she'll only be injured, and there's no threat to her life, right? Rice nodded in agreement. After hesitating for a long moment, Chen Luo took a deep breath and ultimately decided not to follow them. He thought, protecting her like a caged canary won't help. Even if she becomes a king level, she won't be the spirit flame princess from my past life. Chen Luo gently petted Rice. You're truly a remarkable cat. At least a level 10 psychic power user would be needed to sense impending danger and that's usually only for themselves. But Rice can perceive danger for others and foresee it so much in advance. I should start collecting higher grade crystals to enhance Rice. Meanwhile, with the combined efforts of Mi Ling, Mi Li, and Su Du Zhu, they quickly cleared the surrounding zombies. Throughout their journey, they didn't encounter any zombies above level 2. Initially, everything went smoothly, but unbeknownst to them, a mutated zombie had set its sights on them. This level four zombie, with a fairly high intelligence, observed Mi Ling's group from a distance. Instead of rashly attacking, it decided to rally other zombies for help. Just then, Thunder King noticed three zombies in an alleyway and charged at them. However, as soon as he was a distance away from Mi Ling's group, the horde of zombies launched their surprise attack. The level four zombie hit amongst the masses, letting the lower level zombies lead the charge as cannon fodder. Mi Ling didn't run immediately. Instead, she cast an explosive fireball, annihilating several zombies, planning to gradually 
were down the horde. After casting her spell, the trio turned to flee, their faces showing no signs of panic. But at that moment, the level 4 zombie suddenly made its move, manipulating the power of wind to whip up a massive gust. Assisted by this wind, the speed of the zombie horde increased dramatically, rapidly closing in on Mi Ling and her companions. Glancing back, Mi Ling's face turned pale, realizing that there must be a high-level zombie within the horde. Though unsure of its level, she knew they couldn't continue running. They had to turn and fight. Su Daju led the charge, swinging his staff at the zombies in front of him. Mi Ling unleashed a fiery explosion, reducing the zombie horde from over 20 to just a dozen. However, this created an opening for the level 4 zombie. It unleashed a wind blade at Mi Li, who had no time to dodge. Mi Ling, seeing the impending danger, instinctively shielded Mi Li with her own body. The wind blade slashed across Mi Ling's shoulder, and her bright red blood instantly stained Mi Li's clothes. If it wasn't for Mi Ling's level 3 strength and Mi Li's defensive enhancements, her entire shoulder might have been severed by the level 4 zombie's attack. Pain flashed across Mi Ling's face, but her uninjured hand promptly launched a fireball. To her dismay, the level 4 zombie narrowly dodged it. Su Daju made a snap decision, positioning himself between the zombie and the girls. Mi Ling, you handle the regular zombies. I'll hold off this one. Then, we'll take it down together. Mi Ling nodded in agreement. After Mi Li cast a healing spell on Mi Ling, she pulled out the handgun given to her by Chen Luo and fired at the level 4 zombie. Unfamiliar with the weapon, the zombie tried dodging whenever it could. Though the handgun wasn't immensely powerful, it managed to delay the level 4 zombie momentarily. Seizing the opportunity, Su Daju, empowered by Mi Li's enhancement, charged at the zombie. For a short time, even the level 4 zombie couldn't kill Su Daju. Meanwhile, alerted by the gunshots, Thunder King finally realized something was amiss. Fearing for Mi Ling's group, he dashed to the scene. Seeing Thunder King's arrival, Su Daju's face lit up with relief. Quickly, Thunder King began circling around the zombie, leaving it slightly disoriented. Capitalizing on the opportunity, Su Daju swung his staff at the zombie, but it blocked the attack with its hand. At that moment, Mi Li cast an amplification spell on Thunder King. Seizing the opportunity, Thunder King hurled an electrified orb at the back of the level 4 zombie. However, the zombie evaded the attack by leaping aside. Realizing it was outmatched, the level 4 zombie turned to flee. But Thunder King wasn't about to let such a valuable score slip away. He kicked the zombie's back, causing it to stumble and fall. Su Daju quickly pinned the zombie down, preventing it from getting up. The group then took turns pummeling it. Afterwards, Mi Li continuously healed Mi Ling and Su Daju. The trio sighed with relief, grateful for the close call. Thunder King, on the other hand, extracted a crystal from the level 4 zombie. Holding the sizable crystal, his eyes gleamed with delight. Upon returning to base, Thunder King was the first to disembark, presenting a bag of crystals to Chen Luo with a sycophantic smile. Rice relayed to Chen Luo, this sneaky dog wants to know how many points these crystals are worth. After pondering for a moment, Chen Luo responded, let's say 100 points. Thunder King's face lit up with excitement. Chen Luo washed the crystals, intending to use them to help Rice reach level 4 more quickly. Thunder King looked dumbfounded. I worked hard for these crystals, and you're giving them to Rice? Shouldn't you give them to me? Is that fair? After Rice translated Thunder King's words, Chen Luo handed the level 4 crystal back to Thunder King, retorting, you gave me the crystals, and I gave you points. Sounds fair, right? Thunder King couldn't argue with that logic and handed the crystals back to Chen Luo, mumbling, crystals aren't as enticing as points. After all, Chen Luo tightened his grip on rice. Rice was spot on. Mi Ling was in danger, but not life-threatening. When Mi Li was in danger previously, rice had alerted me in advance, allowing me to rush over and play the hero. But why didn't it detect Su Daju's injuries? Was it because they were minor? Or can it currently only sense danger for those it's close to? Chen Luo mused, regardless, such a game-changing ability must be nurtured and upgraded. At dinner, Thunder King excitedly ran over, urging everyone to look at him. Chen Luo and the others gathered around, giving him a thorough examination. Is it just me, or did Thunder King get bigger? Someone questioned. Another joked, maybe you fed him too well. Infuriated by their baffling comments, Thunder King asked Rice to translate his message. Thunder King explained that he had successfully advanced to level 4, and with that, his size had changed. Mi Ling recalled when she first met Chen Luo, who had said that she couldn't even beat his dog. At the time, she had been indignant, but now it seemed the statement was no exaggeration. I can't believe I'm less confident confident than a dog, she lamented. Rice then translated another message for Thunder King. Chen Luo, Thunder King wants to know how many points you're giving for the first one to advance 
to level 4. Chen Luo curiously asked, What do you want with the points? Thunder King proudly proclaimed, I have a dream to become the dog elder, and then, the deputy leader. Then, everyone will call me dog leader. Chen Luo looked stunned for a moment, then his face darkened. He gently nudged Thunder King with his foot. Dog leader, I feel like you're mocking me. Just then, the walkie-talkie on Chen Luo's chest buzzed to life. Big brother, Xiao Hai has sent people over again. Three cars, about a dozen men, claiming they've come for help. I initially brushed them off, but they're really here. Let them in. Song Ling approached first, offering a box of cigarettes. Bro Chen, you probably have plenty of food here. Bro Hai couldn't find anything special, so here's a hundred cigarettes as a gift. Bro Hai went to great lengths to gather them. Whether you accept our request or not, the cigarettes are yours. Chen Luo smiled. What's the matter? Tell me. Song Ling nodded cautiously. An issue arose on our end. A powerful individual with special abilities named Jiang Wu has emerged. He's competing with us for resources and is trying to take in survivors. That would have been tolerable, but he's too arrogant. He claims that two tigers can't share a mountain and threatens to wipe us out if Bro Hai doesn't become his subordinate. This guy is truly formidable. He effortlessly killed over a dozen of our people, including several competent fighters. Most of them were level 2. Bro Hai can't handle him, so we had no choice but to seek your help. Hearing this, Chen Luo pondered. One against a dozen, and many of them were level 2. The difference between level 2 and 3 abilities isn't that vast. It must be at least level 4. Unless this person had access to high-level crystals from the onset of the apocalypse, it must have been a level 6 or even level 7 crystal. Such high-level crystals don't get absorbed quickly. If I manage to take him down, Chen Luo felt this could be a profitable venture. But out of caution, he inquired, what kind of abilities does this person possess? How did he kill those men? Song Ling replied, it seems like he's of the physical type. He simply overpowered and killed our people without much technique. After some thought, Chen Luo agreed to help. All right, I'll come with you to take a look. Upon hearing this, Song Ling was elated. Thank you, Bro Chen. Let's not waste any time and leave right away. He then turned to Rice, holding him and asked, Rice, do you think I might face danger on this trip? If you sense any threat, I won't go. Rice pondered, I don't think so. I haven't sensed anything. What do you mean? Think, is there danger or not? After a more thorough sensing, Rice confirmed, no, you can go in peace. Chen Luo gave him a deadpan look at the phrase, go in peace. If we're setting out, we go together. Thunder King, you stay and guard the house. Soon after, the two arrived at Zhao Hai's base. Bro Chen, I can't thank you enough for coming to help. I'll remember this kindness. Jiang Wu is truly formidable. Our spells barely affect him. Please wait for a moment. Bro Chen, I'll gather our men and track down Jiang Wu. At this moment, Jiang Wu was surrounded by beautiful women, enjoying pleasures he had never experienced before the apocalypse. Then, relying on the crystals in his hand, he leveled up to the fourth level. Just as he was about to interact with the beauties in his arms, a panicked subordinate burst through the door, shouting, Boss, Zhao Hai has brought people here. Seeing his good time interrupted, Jiang Wu was furious. I didn't go looking for him, but he came looking for me. Is he courting death? Call all the brothers, grab your weapons, and follow me. In a short while, Jiang Wu and his men arrived at the entrance of the residential complex. Thus, the two groups confronted each other at the entrance. Meanwhile, Chen Luo was observing Jiang Wu from the back of the crowd. Although he couldn't determine Jiang Wu's exact level, it didn't matter. As long as he wasn't at the seventh level, there was no one he couldn't kill with a single stroke. Then, Jiang Wu started yelling at Zhao Hai. I gave you a chance because I thought you were someone of worth. I didn't expect you to be so ungrateful. I wanted to accept you, but you're courting death. Zhao Hai's face turned extremely unpleasant. Before the apocalypse, he wouldn't even have the chance to deal with such a brat, let alone be cursed by one. Jiang Wu, think you're so great? If I bring a dozen more men, dare you take them on? If you can handle them, I'll serve as your subordinate. Facing Zhao Hai's provocation, Jiang Wu agreed without hesitation. Seeing this, Zhao Hai sneered internally. After all, he's just a naive youngster. He can't resist being provoked. Who dares to take on Jiang Wu? A pound of sausage for each. As expected, with such a big reward, many brave souls stepped up. A group of men began ferociously smashing Jiang Wu with iron rods. However, Jiang Wu's body seemed as hard as iron, and he remained unscathed. Seeing this, Chen Luo knew it was his turn to act. He quietly approached Jiang Wu from behind. As everyone was busy assaulting Jiang Wu, Chen Luo secretly summoned a void sword behind his back. He swung the conjured void sword towards Jiang Wu, and in an instant, Jiang Wu was split in half. At that moment, he looked down in disbelief. Ignoring the shocked expressions of the onlookers, Chen Luo immediately searched for possible crystals on Jiang Wu's body. Even after checking all pockets, he found nothing. Could it be hidden in the bedroom? Recovering from his shock, the experienced Song Ling began to search Jiang Wu's groin area. Seeing Song Ling retrieve a crystal from Jiang Wu's underwear pocket, Chen Luo was astonished. He really knows how to hide things. Isn't he afraid it might be uncomfortable? What if his little brother absorbed the crystal and mutated. Song Ling caressed the crystal in his hand. It was the largest crystal he had ever seen. The larger the crystal, the better its effect. However, before Song Ling could cherish it, Chen Luo reached out for it. Even though Song Ling knew
knew the importance of the crystal, he dared not refuse. He didn't want to end up being bisected like Jiang Wu. Chen Luo took the crystal with a look of disgust, saying, This is even more nauseating than finding it in a zombie's head. After inspecting the quality and remaining power of the crystal, Chen Luo was a bit disappointed. It's only a level 6 crystal, and there's not much power left. Only about a quarter. Luckily, it's a psychic type, which should be suitable for rice to absorb. At this moment, Chen Luo pulled out another crystal from Jiang Wu, making Zhao Hai watch enviously from the side. He too knew the value of the crystal, but he dared not utter a word. He wouldn't dare to compete with Chen Luo. He was well aware that Jiang Wu, whom he couldn't handle, was instantly killed by Chen Luo. Moreover, the manner of Jiang Wu's death was bizarre. Even though he was split in half, not a single drop of blood was shed. Thinking of this, Zhao Hai turned to Jiang Wu's subordinates and said, Everyone, don't be afraid. I promise I won't make things difficult for you. Jiang Wu was an idiot. At this time, we should all come together and focus on getting rid of the zombies. I can assure all of you that following me will not lead to any losses. Those who want to join us, come forward. Chen Luo glanced at the time and said, it's time to go. I can't leave my home unattended. Xiao Hai sighed in relief. Bro Chen, thank you again for your help. If you ever need assistance in the future, just let me know. Do you want some people to escort you home? Chen Luo waved his hand. No need. But about that golden Bentley, I won't be shy about taking it. If Bro Chen likes it, feel free to take it. If we find any good cars in the future, we'll make sure to send them to you first. Zhao Hai assured. Watching Chen Luo drive away, Zhao Hai remarked, it's really advantageous to know a powerful person like him. Send a message down the line. If any of our people encounter Chen Luo in the future, they should be very respectful. He might just save their lives at a crucial moment. On the way back to the villa, Rice was catching up on a TV drama from the morning. Rice was engrossed in the show. Chen Luo took a glance and noticed it was a historical drama. In one scene, a Taoist priest was telling the protagonist's fortune. Young friend, I see a great misfortune looming over you. True to the priest's words, the protagonist soon faced danger. This piqued Rice's interest. This person is even more skilled than me. Chen Luo Luo chuckled, the priest is just acting, but Rice is the real deal. Rice mimicked the movements of the Taoist priest from the TV, making Chen Luo burst into laughter. You're too adorable. Rice, trying to tell a fortune with her claws said, let me predict for me Ling. Chen Luo laughed, wondering if Rice had been genuinely inspired to tell fortunes. Suddenly, Rice's expression turned serious. I foresee a large chest omen for me Ling. Upon hearing this, Chen Luo paused in confusion. A great misfortune, is this real or fake? I'm not at home right now. Is me Ling in danger? With these thoughts. Chen Luo pressed hard on the accelerator, rushing back to the base. Upon arriving, Chen Luo was met with stunned faces. What happened to all of you? Xu Yun, with a bruised and battered face, replied, We went to the artificial lake for training and encountered a swarm of bees. There were over 2,000 of them, making them really hard to deal with. So, understanding the situation, Chen Luo then turned to Mili. Mili, are you okay? Were you hurt? And where's your sister? Why don't I see her? Mili looked around, ensuring no one was listening, before whispering, I'm fine, and so is my sister. But she got stung in a sensitive area, and it swelled up. She's gone back to her room. Chen Luo, a bit puzzled, asked, which area? Mili blushed and pointed to her chest. Suddenly, everything clicked for Chen Luo, so the large chest omen was not the great misfortune I was thinking of. Rice, you should have been clearer. You scared me half to death. Rice responded with a pitiful look. I did say large chest omen. Meanwhile, on the streets, Su Yang held his dying brother, grief evident in his eyes. But his brother, struggling to breathe, advised, brother, I've observed the villa-based base you joined. It's safe there. You don't have to worry about someone betraying you constantly. Tears streaming down his face. Suyang cried. Brother, don't leave me. You're the only family I have left. If we're to join, let's join together. Difficulty. His elder brother smiled. I can't make it. Currently, we only have two crystals, and we need three to join. However, they didn't specify that the crystals must come from zombies. Extract my crystal to make it three, and then you can join them. His brother's strength waned, and soon his head drooped, leaving Suyang devastated in the middle of the street. In the end, Su Yang did extract his brother's crystal, but this event drastically changed his mindset. Even though we were a bit cowardly at the start, why didn't you give us a chance? Why couldn't we join you to kill zombies as a team? Instead, you forced my brother and me to face the zombies alone. If it weren't for your harsh requirements, my brother would still be alive. I hate you all. I'll make sure every one of you pays for my brother's death. Su Yang's plan was to first join Chen Luo's side. However, when he returned to Chen Luo with the crystal, Rice immediately sensed his malicious intent. This man wants to kill you, Rice said. 
Although Chen Luo didn't show any reactions on the surface, he was wondering, what grudge does he hold against me to want me dead? He sent Rice away, saying, the scene that's about to unfold isn't fit for viewing. Then he took Su Yang to a room where Jin Tao was. Without uttering a word, Chen Luo slapped Su Yang across the face. Tell me, why do you want to kill me? Who sent you? Su Yang was shocked, wondering how Chen Luo knew his intentions. He feigned innocence. We just met. Why would I want to kill you? I genuinely wanted to join. At this, Chen Luo slapped him again. Tell me the truth. My patience has limits. Unable to restrain himself, Su Yang stood up, electricity crackling in one hand and a blazing fireball in the other. Chen Luo's pupils shrank. This was dual ability activation, a phenomenon extremely rare and difficult to attain. In his previous life, even after reaching the king level, Chen Luo had never managed to activate a second ability. Su Yang yelled, all because you set such strict requirements. My brother died because of you, while you sit back at home and play with cats. Don't you deserve death? Chen Luo replied exasperatedly, as if I caused the apocalypse. Was it my fault you suffered? Did I beg you to join? Enraged, Su Yang unleashed his dual abilities on Chen Luo. But to Chen Luo, it was nothing. Without holding back, Chen Luo waved his hand, a spatial force cutting Su Yang's head off. Later, members of the team began to go on various missions. Rice, however, was intently staring at someone, saying hesitantly, I feel, this person will die. Chen Luo was taken aback. Previously, Rice could only sense danger around those close to him, but after reaching the fourth level, he could sense strangers' fates. To verify Rice's prediction, Chen Luo decided to personally follow the person. Meanwhile, Su Mingqing stepped behind a tree to relieve himself. Su Mingqing had distanced himself from the group when Chen Luo looked up and noticed a zombified cat on the tree. It was a black cat, well hidden amongst the branches. Just as it was about to pounce on Su Mingqing, Chen Luo, with lightning-fast reflexes, slapped it away. Simultaneously, back at the villa, Rice suddenly spat out blood and fainted. This startled Thunder King, whose eyes widened in shock. What's happening? If something happens to Rice, how will I explain to the master? The main concern for Thunder King was that only it was present with Rice, and there were no witnesses. What if the master thinks I hurt Rice? I wouldn't even be able to explain, and I might end up as dog meat. With trembling fear, Thunder King approached Rice, gently nudging him. But Rice didn't respond. Growing more anxious, Thunder King decided to inform the master. Holding Rice in its mouth, Thunder King placed him on a chair and ran out to find Chen Luo. Within moments, a teary-eyed Thunder King located Chen Luo and barked twice before turning to lead the way. Thunder King knew Chen Luo would understand the urgency. Sure enough, Chen Luo's face paled, and he followed Thunder King at full speed towards the base. In less than a minute, Chen Luo arrived at the base. Thunder King stood beside the rocking chair, barking in distress, as if trying to say, it wasn't my fault. The sight truly panicked Chen Luo, who rushed to Rice's side, cradling him and checking his condition. His heart was still beating, and his body was warm. He's still alive. Chen Luo sighed in relief, but he was puzzled about how Rice, in perfect health, could have been injured when none of the members on guard duty were hurt. Clearly, no outsiders had been here. With murderous intent in his eyes, Chen Luo demanded, who did this? Thunder King shivered and hastily shook its head, indicating its innocence. Mi Li, who had just arrived, asked, Chen Luo, what happened? Why did you call me back so urgently? What's wrong with Rice? We'll discuss it later. First, heal him. Mi Li nodded, quickly employing her healing ability to tend to Rice. Chen Luo was lost in thought. Why would Rice get hurt? Was it because I intervened and saved Su Ming Qing, causing Rice's prophecy to backlash against him? But before this, Rice had also prophesied about Mi Li and Mi Ling, and intervening had never been an issue. After undergoing the healing, Rice slowly opened his eyes, appearing extremely drained. Don't worry, he murmured, I'm fine. This time, I was indeed affected because the prophecy was altered. Feeling guilty, Chen Luo said, I shouldn't have been so impulsive. Rice, focusing his senses, explained, I sense a track around me. You, Mi Ling, and Mi Li are on this track, orbiting around me, while others are outside of it. If you three deviate from it, I can correct the course. But if anyone else does, it comes with a significant risk for me. Thunder King seems to be desperately trying to get onto the track, but he's at the farthest point from me. Correcting his path might mean I'd never get to eat fish again. Chen Luo analyzed Rice's words, realizing that if someone had a 100% intimacy level with Rice, then the outcome of Rice's prophecies could be altered without backlash. Currently, only Chen Luo, Mi Li, and Mi Ling fit this category. Such power must be used judiciously. In my past life, I never met Rice. Turning to Thunder King, he patted its head. Thunder King, it would benefit you to get closer to Rice in the future. Thunder King looked puzzled. I'm not a sycophant. Why would I need to cozy up to him? After Chen Luo whispered an explanation into its ear, Thunder King's eyes widened in realization. The benefits are so significant, it means I can ensure my survival. Chen Luo placed Rice on Thunder King's back. From now on, Thunder King will double up as your mount, Rice. A month swiftly passed, and Chen Luo once again gathered everyone. As you all have witnessed in the past month, within just over 30 days, some of the level 2 zombies have started evolving again. When Chen Luo spoke, everyone below began to panic. Disgust
discussing amongst themselves. I encountered a level 3 zombie yesterday. It scared the life out of me, one said. I haven't even reached level 3 yet, another exclaimed. They're not going to keep evolving indefinitely, are they? Wondered a third. Hearing these comments, Chen Luo interjected, everyone, stay calm. The zombie's evolution only means they have had some enhancement in attributes and gained a little intelligence. It's not the same concept as your level evolution. However, I'll still ensure everyone has enough time to adapt. For the first three days, I only require one level 3 crystal daily. Any additional crystal you acquire will earn you two points. After three days, the daily requirement will increase to two level 3 crystals, and any extra will earn you three points. At that moment, the intercom crackled with Chen Guang's voice. Bro, Zhao Hai's people are at the door again. They say they have news to share with you. Chen Luo rolled his eyes, thinking, what now? He announced, everyone, form teams and practice nearby for now. Dismissed. Walking to the villa entrance, Chen Luo straightforwardly asked the visitors, what's the matter? The visitor explained, there's a gathering being organized near the toll booth on National Highway 999. The intention is to bring everyone in the vicinity together to discuss how to overcome our current challenges. The gathering is scheduled for the day after tomorrow. Bro Hai intends to attend, and he wanted to know if you'll be joining. Rubbing his chin, Chen Luo remembered something similar from his past life. Of course I'll attend this gathering. I didn't participate in my previous life, but after being reborn, my goal is to gather and unite the elites from everywhere. I want to create a strong and unified haven to withstand these apocalyptic times. A social event like this is the perfect opportunity to network and collaborate. The day after tomorrow quickly arrived, and Chen Luo led his team to the gathering. As they stepped onto the highway, a sleazy voice called out, Hey handsome, wanna have some fun? How about you guys? Our shop offers a variety of services at reasonable prices. Just 10 kilograms of rice or a level 2 crystal. Chen Luo looked at the sleazy man with disgust. The world's ending, and you're still preying on women. He held a particular disdain for such individuals. The trading post was situated on the highway. Everyone parked their vehicles on either side and set up stalls in front of their vehicles, reminiscent of a bustling marketplace. Chen Luo's group was taken aback by the lively scene, something they hadn't seen in a long while. Chen Luo also set up a stall, displaying a sign detailing the benefits offered at his base. The sign stated they were only recruiting level 3 power users or those with unique abilities. It also mentioned they would pay high prices for high-level crystals, with the tagline, Don't worry about our ability to pay, just make sure you have the goods. After setting up, Chen Luo instructed his group, Browse around, buy what you want, and contact anyone who has something of interest. After briefing them, he began wandering the market with Chen Guang, Fang Yu, Xia Haoren, and Su Daju. As they were about to complete their round of the market, Chen Luo noticed a crowd gathered around a particular stall. He quickly made his way there, politely pushing through the crowd for a better view. Recognizing the vendor, he exclaimed, Isn't this brother Long, the one I met at the market after gathering supplies? Isn't that chicken the one Xia Haoren begged for? To his surprise, it seemed the chicken had yet to be eaten. At that moment, Zhou Mingliang coldly smirked at Jiang Long. You want money for that damn chicken that burned my brother's hair? Do you think you can bully me? I'll give you a hundred kilograms of rice, not a grain more. Otherwise, let's settle this elsewhere. Jiang Long, looking distressed, replied, This chicken has the potential to become a phoenix. I want at least ten tons of rice or dozens of level two crystals. Chen Luo's eyes lit up when he saw the chicken. Brother Long, I'll give you twenty level two crystals for this chicken. I'll take it. At this, Zhou Mingliang glared menacingly at Chen Luo. Are you trying to stir trouble? This chicken injured my brother. It's only right that it's sold to me. Chen Luo merely glanced at him and chose not to respond. Seeing Chen Luo ignoring him, Zhou Mingliang's anger boiled over, and he lunged at Chen Luo. However, before he could make a move, Xia Haoren punched him, sending him flying. Now, Zhou Mingliang was utterly enraged. Damn it. Anyone who wants to live better get out of the way. It's always been me, Zhou Mingliang, bullying others. Today, someone dares to stand up to me? Get them. Chen Luo, with a smirk on his face, watched Xia Haoren's swift action. I wonder what Brother Long's reaction would be if he knew just how powerful Xia Haoren is, Chen Luo thought. Without hesitation, Xia Haoren, with a steely expression, moved forward. With fists as fast as lightning, he took down each opponent. In less than two minutes, the dozens that had surrounded them were all knocked to the ground. And even after taking down so many, Xia Haoren was unscathed. Seeing this, Jiang Wang was utterly flabbergasted. Even though he knew Xia Haoren was a champion in free fighting, he hadn't expected such a difference in power, especially now that it was the end of days and many had supernatural abilities. He regretted his previous decision. He could have had someone of Xia Haoren's caliber on his side just for a single chicken. How could I have been so foolish back then? Jiang Wang lamented. 